I'll get in. Oh! I'll get in. I... I love you. Oh! I laughed as loud as I could in that voice. How's it going, everybody? Hudlamut here, back with some more Steins Gate Zero. And, uh, last time... Oh my gosh, I have, like, information overload right now. Um... We were held at gunpoint by Dr. Leskinen. We shoved him on the stairs and he cracked his head on it, and we didn't take the gun, because we're dumb. And then we... We found Kagari up on the, uh, on the roof with Suzaha and Mayuri and uh, held her while she was bleeding out, and then found out that it was it was actually Yuki, but not actually Yuki. It, it was actually Kagari who had plastic surgery done to her face to look like Yuki. Like, what the frick? What? I I don't know. I don't know what's going on, man. And then and then. And then, and then she was hearing the voice of God, but the voice of God, according to a Dr. Leskinen who had brain damage, who came up with a gun again, uh, said that, that it was him in her head who was the voice of God, quote unquote, uh, from the year 2036. So when she went back in time, she went and found him. And that's how all this kind of like started with her being his little minion or whatever. Uh, and she died also, by the way, that's important information. Uh, and then Mayuri and Suzaha tried to leave in the time machine and it blew up and they were gone and there was no remnant of them. So we're not sure if, if they actually did get out or not. Uh, I think they did. It kind of seems like that's the case, but I, and then, and then we went home after like World War Three was starting to break out and freaking all kinds of stuff was happening on the news we looked at the text on Mayetti's phone that she gave us that she was supposed to, to send to us and it was very heartfelt and cute and sad and it gave Okabe the strength to become Haoen Kiyoma once again and he he put on his lab coat they built a time machine they as in him Daru uh, Fadis and Maho and he he jumped, I believe, into the past. I, I I I was so hype I forgot to look at where the number ended up going to, but uh we'll probably find out now. So I believe we are in the past. Holy crap. I, I guess just hold on to your butts because I don't know what to expect anymore. We're just getting destroyed with all this information, man. This is there's so much stuff happening. Oh my goodness gracious. All right, here we go. <laughs> the next thing I knew, I was standing in the middle of an Akihabara alleyway. I was holding a cell phone in my hand. I had a nasty headache, and there was a stinging pain in my neck. I felt a pain on one side of my head like a migraine headache, and the left side of my face hurt really bad. My vision flashed with dark and bright spots. Oh crap, did they like not perfect the time leap machine so it's like actually screwing with his head? Is it doing what I thought would happen in the first game but never actually did? No way. Or is he just like, did this always happen and he's just expounding on it now or something? I took a look around. The alley was still peaceful. I heard no gunshots and no explosions. The otaku were enjoying their shopping, and girls in maid outfits were calling out to passers-by. That alone was enough to tell me for sure that the time leap was successful. I looked at the time on my smartphone. July 7th, 5.45 p.m. I had around 40 to 50 minutes before the war began. That still wasn't enough. But the 48-hour limit of the time leap machine meant 
this was as far as I could go. No. No point in getting negative. If the machine would have been finished just a little later, it would have been too late. I should be glad to have made it here at all. I knew what I'd been doing at this time. I was running around Akihabara looking for Mayuri. First, I needed to call Maho. She should have been looking for Mayuri too. Okay, so phones still work at this particular moment. Hello? Did you find her? No. But I know where she is. Hurry back to the lab. I hung up before she could answer and went back to the lab myself. She was already there by the time I arrived. You found my Yeti, right? Don't you have to go get her? <laughs> Daru was acting a little awkward, probably because he just hit me. Hiajo, you did it! Huh? I grabbed both of her hands and shook them. Both Maho and Daru seemed confused as to what was going on. I've time leapt here from 48 hours in the future. What? Seriously? We finished it? Sometime in the next 48 hours? Yeah. But how? I'll explain later. There's no time, so listen carefully. A lot of lives are at stake. I'd gone over the mission many, many times while waiting for work on the phone wave to finish. I'd thought of everything to say. Hiajo, access Amadeus right now and delete Kuditz and Maho, as well as all their backups. Leskinen's not planning on using them for peaceful purposes at all. W what? I can't just... I told you I time leapt here, right? Akihabara is going to be a war zone in less than an hour from now. They're coming for the time machine. And that will be the beginning of the Third World War. If we don't stop it, Suzuha and Mayuri will both die. Maho and Daru went pale when they heard that. Really? Wait, really? So do as I tell you. Please. I can access the data, but to do anything, I'll need the professor's access rights. That's Daru's job. Crack in and destroy all the data. Okie dokie. Leave it to me. Daru started typing at an incredible speed. His daughter's life was on the line. Maho stood next to him and typed in her ID and password to begin accessing Amadeus. I'm going to the radio building. You guys stay here. Okarin! Take care of Suza. Right. Leave it to me. Daru didn't even look up from his computer. Suzuha! Mayuri! When I made it to the top of the radio building, Mayuri quickly ducked behind the time machine. Okari! Oh, Mayuri was trying not to look at me. Her eyes were a little red because she'd been crying so much. She'd heard me talking about Kuditz's sacrifice in the Alpha World line. My heart ached again, realizing how much I'd hurt her. Mayuri, are you going to use the time machine to go back to the past? Huh? How? I've time leapt here from 48 hours in the future. I know all about it. What? Is that true? I nodded. This place is going to be a war zone in less than 30 minutes. What? 
Did someone find out about the time machine somehow? Yeah. That's bad. Then we'll have to jump right now. Suzaha leapt into the time machine. No! Wait just a second. Dadu and Hyajo are dealing with it. They're smart people. It'll go fine. But... If it doesn't... If it doesn't? You may die. What do you mean, may? What happened to us before you time leapt? Wait. There was some fatal failure before you time leapt, right? <laughs> I didn't know if I should tell them. No. There was no time to hesitate. You were inside the time machine, and just before it jumped, it was hit by a rocket launcher. <laughs> but... I couldn't find your bodies in the rubble. I see. That's why you said maybe. Then the future hasn't been decided. There's still a possibility of success. I thought you'd say that. Don't try and stop me, uncle. Her eyes were filled with resolve. They seemed to say that if I tried to stop her, she'd do whatever it took to ensure I failed. Of course, I had no intention of stopping her. She'd come here to do her job, and there was no way to change her mind. Actually, I'd come here to ensure that she could jump without having to worry about Stratford's interference. But my Yuri... The uncertainty that had been going in and out of my mind ever since I'd read her message reared its head again. Mayuri, are you really leaving? <laughs> I'm sorry I didn't tell you. But I, and Kuditz, and everyone else, we love you. I came to this world line because I wanted to save you. So if you leave, I... We... Alkarin. No. I know exactly how you feel, but... Hey, Uncle Alkarin. And then Suzaha spoke softly. Operation Aquila has begun. Operation... Aquila? It's not the original plan I was told about. We're not going back to July 28th. We're going to August 21st. August 21st? That was the day Suzaha had come in the time machine. And the day I'd given up on everything. We need Big Sis Mayu for that plan to work. That's what my dad told me from the future just now. What? In the future, Daru had come up with an operation I knew nothing about? And he needed Mayuri for it? Her unexpected words sent my mind reeling. Alkari! And then Mayuri came close enough for me to hold her, and grabbed my hand tight. She looked a little... like she was about to cry. But her eyes were clear and bright. Mayuri... Let me go. Okay? <laughs> Mayushi's a lab member too, you know. Mayushi's going to take her glum Hikaboshi and slap him across the face, okay? <laughs> Please. I remembered what was in that message. I remembered how she must feel right now. The last remnants of my hesitation slowly melted away. I... I... 
I thought I was carrying all of the burden myself. But I was wrong, wasn't I? I couldn't see what was right in front of me. It wasn't just you, Mayuri. I had all the rest of the lab with me, too. I'll get in. I suddenly felt a horrible pain in my leg, as the shock knocked me several meters forward and onto the ground. Uncle, okay. Uncle Dean! I looked down at my leg and saw that there was a red stain around the calf. It felt like it was on fire. The pain flared up each time my heart beat, and I couldn't stand. Was I just shot by Leskinen because you didn't grab the gun? Oh no! No, because he didn't do that part this time, because he came earlier, right? Oh, frick! You're... Kagari! Oh, no! Why are you here?! A girl in a motorcycle suit was standing there. Kagari had a handgun in her right hand, and in her left, she was holding what looked like a bomb. There was no sign of the professor, or the other men in camo. That much was fortunate. But Kagari had shown up a little earlier than I expected. She must have been there prior or something. I hadn't quite planned for this, but evidently I'd run out of time. Suzaha! Get in the time machine! Go now! What? I'm sorry for being stupid. Daru's capable of doing whatever it takes to protect you. He's never going to fail you. You know that! Uncle Okarin! So the machine will be just fine, right? Of course. In fact, there was no sign of anyone but Kagari showing up. That meant that Daru and Maho's efforts had been successful, and they'd kept the secrets of the time machine out of Stratford's hands. Mayuri, you too! Hurry! B but what about you, Okarin? She was looking at my injured leg and panicking. There's no need to worry about me. I'm not going to die for another 14 years. <laughs> Kakadi fired again. The bullet struck less than 30 centimeters away from where I was lying on the ground. Nobody move, or I'll kill him. Don't get in the time machine. I'm going to give it to the professor. And then I'm going to have him tell me how to use it and go back to the future. <laughs> Forget about her. I'll handle this. Just go. You too, Suzaha. You can leave Kagari to me. Got it. Big Sis Mayu, inside. What? Huh? Wait! Suzaha pushed Mayuri inside the time machine and out of my sight. Uncle Elkarin! Take care of Kagari! Roger! Suzaha followed Mayuri inside. And at the same time, the hatch started to close. I told you not to do that! Come out! Kagari ran up to it. I forced myself to stand up, ignoring the piercing pain, and blocked her way. I won't let you interfere! Shut up! Move! I refuse! Move! Ooh! Gwah! Kagari kicked my injured leg and hard. The pain made me so dizzy I could hardly stand. Kagari slipped past me and tried to grab onto the time machine. She was going to use the bomb in her hand. If she did, things would turn out the same as last time. My time leap would be wasted. Get out, or I'll use this bomb and blow up the machine. Stop. I grabbed her from behind and wrapped my arms under hers. I pulled her away from the machine, ignoring the pain in my leg. Don't you understand? If you do that, your mom's going to die! <laughs> B 
But I... I... Just calm down! Please! Mayeti tossed a hard drive to me from the almost completely closed hatch. Alcarin! Here! What fell on the floor was the thing Kuditz had left behind for Maho. Th this is Kuditz's! How did it get here? I thought Russia had destroyed it. Don't get mad at Dad. I think he's going to need it for the time machine research. I could just barely hear Suzaha's voice from within the machine. So that was it. Daru had hid it in the time machine? Wait, how? How'd he get his hands on it, though? What? If it... what? So it... Did they get it back in the future? Or something? How did he get his hands on it? Oh. Bye, Okarin. I'll come back, okay? I could see Mayuri looking at me from the small gap in the door. That's right. This was a temporary goodbye. I'd see her again someday. Right, Mayuri? So I would send off my brave lab member 002 with my head held high. I'm counting on you, lab member 002. Mayuri Shina! Execute Operation Aquila! Slap me in the face for being so pathetic! Yup! Leave it to me! Oh, Karin, I... I love you! Oh! <laughs> Dude! My heart! My whole entire heart, dude! Oh, it's so sweet. Oh. Yeah. Oh. That's so wholesome. I smiled as the hatch sealed completely shut. The time machine started to roar. I felt like I heard a helicopter in the distance. I believed in him. But for now, I had no proof that Daru had been able to crack the complicated Amadeus system and delete every bit of data. It was possible that special forces teams from all around the world were converging on Akihabara right now. Imagining that made me want to hurry. Quickly. Go, quickly! I felt like praying as I watched the pale light surrounding the time machine. Big Sis Suzaha! Kagari's cry went unanswered. Wow, he somehow reached her. That's crazy. He was able to stop her. A bright light covered the time machine, and it vanished from this world. It worked. Uh, uh. Kagari sobbed and glared at me with eyes full of hate. Why? Why did you let Mommy go? She shook away my hands and pointed the gun at my head. I stared her dead in the face. Your wonderful Mommy's gone with Suzaha to go scold a stupid man who ruined the world. Oh. She's going to do something very important for the sake of the whole world. Y you're lying! You're lying! Mommy and Big Sis Suzaha both left me behind! I'm not lying. And I'm about to go make it so that you can meet Mommy in a much happier place. So let's stop this. Okay? N no I can't believe that. No. I know you'll believe me. Because I know who you really are. And how kind you really are. <laughs> the gun barrel started to shake a little. She's gonna get shot by Leskinen. He's gonna come up behind us. He's gonna shoot her and she's gonna die again. Freaking, I can feel it. Watch me be right. You know me? 
I do. I've time leapt from 48 hours in the future. Kakari put her hands to her head as her body spasmed with pain. I hear the voice of God. It tells me not to believe you. You're a liar and an enemy, it says. It says if I kill you, I can go back to mommy. It says to kill the bad man who's trying to destroy the world. And then I can go back to my old world. Kagari wasn't making any sense. Was this brainwashing? Had the professor done something so cruel? I don't understand! I don't understand! I don't understand! I grabbed the flailing hand that held the gun and looked deep into her eyes. She was crying and scared. Listen. Mommy's not coming back. But if we do our best, we may be able to make a world where you and Mommy can be happy. That's why she traveled through time. You mustn't waste the chance she gave you. You can still start over. It's okay to disobey the voice of God. Yeah. Oh wow, that's kind of that's that's interesting because it's obviously not God in this case, but it's it's like a callback to what Maho was kind of saying, even though it was like, well, we're not going against God, we're just doing, you know, we're messing with the physical reality or whatever, right? You know, it's that's interesting. I wonder I wonder if if they'll expound on that a little bit more or not. Because obviously I can't agree with it uh, in, its, <laughs> in its very broad st uh, stated way there. But, you know, I'm curious to know if it goes any further or if he's literally just saying that in terms of because he knows Leskinen is the voice in her head. It's just kind of interesting that that was a uh, kind of a uh, thematic element that was just voiced, I guess, so... The voice of God she was hearing was probably the professor's brainwashing. How far had its claws sunk into her mind, I had no way to tell. But now we had Maho, a specialist in brain science. If we work hard at treatment, I'm sure she'll be okay. <laughs> hey, Okabe. Her voice was normal again. I want to see Mommy. Can I? You can. Someday. I'm glad. I knew it! I freaking- I, I told you! She just got shot, dude! I knew it! I knew it! I freaking called it! I just- I can see these things, dude! I just know, dude! My brain is so ginormous! Why am I- why do I have to be right? I didn't want to be right this time! <laughs> there was another sudden gunshot. Kagari's body collapsed right in front of me. No! It was you? I thought it was gonna be Leskinen! No! Why you? I looked over at where it came from and saw another girl in a black motorcycle suit. She wasn't wearing a helmet, so I could tell it was Moika Kiryu pointing a gun at us. Her face was deathly pale, and she was crying. W Why? Why are you here? Why, Moika, could you? FB. Hey, FB. I didn't let that woman trick me. I knew this was a fake phone. So please, don't abandon me, FB. FB. Oh my gosh. She freaking. Ah! She freaking. Was she actually tricking her with the phone? 
Oh, yeah, she was. That's right. Yeah, because she said that it was a, a phone that she gave her and that she was typing as though it was, oh, my gosh. Yeah, Kagari was pretending to be FB. Ah, freak, dude. The cell phone fell from her hands. <laughs> Another shot from her gun blew it into fragments. I held Kagari in my arms. Her chest was turning red. Hey, hang in there. I'm glad. Even the voice of God wasn't right all the time. This is my punishment. I destroyed her heart and tried to manipulate her. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to grow up like this. Mommy, where are you? Where are you? Her voice grew thinner. Moika Kiryu collapsed some distance away. Her eyes were unfocused, and all she did was mumble. She didn't seem capable of coherent thought. How did she know she was going to be there? Was she tracking her? How, how did... Freaking, they don't explain how she knew to get here. What the frick? I mean, obviously, Kagari has to die somehow right here because apparently the world line must, like, say she must die right here every time. Okay? Like, like, like how it was with, uh, with, with, with Mayeti. It's like causality or whatever. But, like, frick, you know? <laughs> I thought it was gonna be Leskin, and that made more sense. He was already there, he was already on his way. Both of them would be in danger if I didn't get them to a hospital. But. Uh. Dozens of men in camo jumped over the fence on the roof out of nowhere. What? Even Daru and Maho couldn't succeed in this short a time span. Or was this world line going to converge so that the war started here, no matter what? No. But... It wasn't a waste. If nothing else, they bought me time. And that had delayed the attack long enough for Suzaha and Mayeti to leave. That's right. In this instant, we'd already won. No, but, but reading Steiner didn't go off. Nothing changed. The world line would have instantly changed for you. Right? It's not like you're waiting on them. You already waited on them. Like, it already happened. So, like, uh, he should know that, right? The way forward was still uncertain, but there was no doubt that the path to Steins Gate lay before me. Target 1 lost. Target 2 and Target 3 lost as well. What's going on? The leader was talking on his radio. I could see attack helicopters in the sky. I heard that siren again. This is guerrilla attack information. Repeat, guerrilla attack information. A guerrilla attack may occur in this area. Please get indoors and obtain further information from radio or television broadcasts. The war was starting, just as I had thought. Even the time leap couldn't change that. Is that you, Lintalo? Leskinen appeared from behind the men in camo. Oh, he came in a different way this time. That's right. He was a secret member of Stratfer, just like them. What are you doing here? Is Kagari dead? <laughs> Tell me, Lintalo. Where is the time machine? I laid Kagari down on the ground and slowly rose back up. Blood wouldn't stop coming out of the wound in my leg. The pain was getting worse. But even still, I stood up proud and strong. In front of the men with their guns. 
in front of the attack helicopter with its rocket launchers. In front of the professor. In front of the war that was about to begin. I laughed as loud as I could in that voice. <laughs> Listen well, fools! The time machine you sought to attain is gone! It no longer exists in this time. Too bad! Now curse your own incompetence! And tremble in fear! For I, the great Haoin Kiyoma, will never lose to you, and I will never lose to fate. I will find the path to Stein's Gate! That's right. This was the beginning of the long, long epigraph necessary to reach Stein's Gate. Madness is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. Einstein had once said that, when he despaired of human folly. But now I would gladly give myself over to that madness and folly. I would use every bit of dedication and obsession within me to seek the lone different outcome, which the laws of God could not reach. That is my choice! <laughs> That's so cool. Oh. Uh huh? Oh, frick, that was it! Yo, so that must be how that ending ends then. Wait, but this is, this should just go straight into the true ending, right? Uh, wait a minute. Okay, I'm gonna wait because they might pull a, pull a, 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 like how the first game did and suddenly start talking and then send us into the, the true ending. But that was pretty cool. Wow, that was a cool ending. That was cool too. That was, that was interesting. I, there was so much that happened that those last couple of episodes, like, holy crap. I'm noticing too in this particular ending, I think, I think it's like a little jittery or something. Like, I don't know if you can kind of see that, but I feel like the frames are kind of like getting choppy and, and I don't really know why. Anyway, um, yeah, it, it just very cool. I, I love the transition from the fourth ending into this ending. Um, so much insanity. I, I still am not over the fact that Kagari did plastic surgery to look like Yuki to, to be close to us. I, she never explained what the purpose of that was, but like, what the heck? It's just like, man, I don't know. But again, like, the thing was, is Mayuri and Suzuha should have, like, as soon as they left, if they really did change anything, it, it should have activated reading Steiner, right? Shouldn't that have happened? Like, instantly. As soon as they were gone, instant, it, like, instant change. He should have noticed it, right? So, I wonder what that means. I don't know what it means. All right. Oh! <gasps> there it is! Milky Way Crossing! <laughs> Alright, I thought so! I thought so, baby! Let's go, okay. Alright, this is- this should be the true ending then. Oh my gosh. <laughs>